Welcome to No Longer Conformed. I'm Eric Dorothy, and we are studying the book of Ephesians, The Mystery Revealed. In this session, we'll be looking at Ephesians chapter 2, verses 11 to 22, Reconciliation of Outsiders. Coloring with crayons, one of the fun parts is the difference between using them separately and mixing them together. A crayon by itself retains the same color, but mixed with another produces a new color. Jesus Christ has done the same thing with the church. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 14 and 15 it says for he himself is our peace who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation having abolished in his flesh the enmity that is the law of commandments contained in ordinances so as to create in himself one new man from the two thus making peace Spiritual transformation of individuals results in a corporate oneness. And how is that? Well, reconciliation. Making peace between enemies. People at enmity with God, and people at enmity with each other. First, Jesus brought the Gentiles to himself. Look at uh, verse 11, down to verse 13. Therefore, remember that you, once Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by what is called circumcision, made in the flesh by hands, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Remember, remember who you were, Gentiles. Remember what you were called, uncircumcision. Remember what you lacked. What did Gentiles lack? Well, they had five strikes against them. Number one, they had no relationship with Christ. Two, they had no citizenship in God's covenant. Three, they had no share in the promise. Four, they had no hope. And five, they had no faith. We were Gentiles. All without Christ are, are. But look at verse 13 and the reversal of their status. You who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Faith in Christ brings us into God's family. The saving work of Jesus is sufficient. Salvation by grace through faith, verses 8 and 9, chapter 2. For by grace you've been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. It's his saving work, not of works, lest anyone should boast. It's by grace through faith. So Jesus brought the Gentiles to himself. And second, Jesus made Jews and Gentiles into one. Verse 14, down to verse 18. For he himself is our peace, who has made both one, and has broken down the middle wall of separation, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, that is, the law of commandments, contained in ordinances, so as to create in himself one new man from the two, thus making peace. And that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity. And he came and he preached peace to you who were far off and to those who were near. For through him we both have access by one spirit to the Father. Read that verse 17 again. And he came and preached peace to you who were far off and to those who were near. Jews and Gentiles, formerly enemies, are now reconciled. And how did Jesus accomplish that? 
by the sacrifice of himself on the cross. Made both one, those who hated each other, Jews and Gentiles. Listen, hear me well. Racism can only be resolved through Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter how many laws are passed. It doesn't matter how much activism work is done socially. It doesn't matter. Racism can only be resolved through Jesus Christ. He made both one. And it has broken down the middle wall of separation. What was that wall? The law. The reason separation existed at all. The images of the temple wall between the court of the Gentiles and the rest of the temple area. It says they abolished in his flesh the enmity. What does that mean? Well, Jesus took away the power of the law to condemn he formed one church of all believers, Jews and Gentiles. And it says, thus making peace. That looks back to Isaiah chapter 57, verse 19. I create the fruit of the lips, peace, peace to him who is afar off and to him who is near, says the Lord, and I will heal him. And then, he reckoned, he brought them together, made, took the two and made them one, and then he reconciled them both to God. Sin made a quarrel between God and man. Doesn't matter who you are, Jew or Gentile, Jesus joined the fight and he ended it, reconciling man to an offended God, making peace, it says. We now have free access free access to the almighty creator of the universe. Jesus made Jews and Gentiles into one and reconciled them to God. And then third, Jesus built for himself a dwelling place. Verse 19, down to verse 22. Now therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom the whole building, being fitted together, grows into a, temp a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. Now, therefore, now, therefore, what follows draws a conclusion from the previous verses, from 14 to 18. An inferior status has given way to a full acceptance by God. Strangers were, strangers were short-term transients who just came through the city, who came through, and foreigners were resident aliens. So you had Strangers and you had foreigners. You had people who were just coming through for a short time and then you had foreigners who were living there among the people. But neither one of them had any citizen rights. And yet, believing Gentiles were granted full privileges as citizens in Christ. Full members of the family of God. Jews and Gentiles, living stones of the same building. What about its foundation? The apostles and prophets who were close associates of the Lord. And the cornerstone? Jesus Christ himself. Perfect to provide stability. It is a sure foundation. What kind of building is being erected on that foundation? Well, it's a holy temple. A dwelling place for God. It is a special kind of structure, the place where God's presence is manifested. It's a place of spiritual growth, a place of increasing holiness. And how? Because, Jesus, because of Jesus Christ's presence, this is the spiritual union with Christ. In whom? The apostle is talking about the church, not the building, but the people. The church is God's dwelling place on earth. Jesus built for himself a dwelling place. Hmm. 
what things to think about. You have a great day.